Hello, viewers. We are back again with the second episode of Revelation of Hope. Beloved, it is good to have you with us today. God is speaking to us through signs and symbols. And today, he has a something special for you. Revelation of Hope is coming to your home with something special. Whatever crisis that you are you're going through, whatever the challenge of this world may be, Jesus is our hope. So hope here, right in this studio, we bring you hope into your home. Today, we are handling on a topic the background of the book of Daniel. Last week, we handled a topic of the understanding and interpretation of biblical studies. And we went to understand, so we, we understood so many things from this. Today, we are moving to another level. The background of God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, they faced the consequences. And so, one of the greatest moves um, that um, we normally uh, um, don't understand about God is how he led his own people into captivity in um, Babylon. All right. And so, when um, Jehoiakim um, started rebelling against God and trampling upon the laws of God, he formed um, an alliance with Egypt. By then, Egypt was a powerful nation because um, Egypt, Egypt had conquered the Assyrians and the Syrians and the Palestinians, that era. Yeah. So um, Egypt was ruling. Yeah, he was the superpower. And when um, Jehoiakim formed an alliance with him, he, he, he relied on the strength of man and forgot what God has done for him. And so Babylon by then was rising. So mm -hmm. after um, Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. then Nebuchadnezzar the second came. Um, Nebuchadnezzar reigned from 605 to 526 BC. Mm -hmm. And so when he ascended the throne in 605, yeah. he started making wars around because he wanted to become more powerful. Mm -hmm. And so when he started the wars, by then, as I stated, Jehoiakim was um, in a strong alliance with Egypt. Mm -hmm. And for Babylon to, to, to become so powerful, he needed by then to conquer the one who was the superpower, that is Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, um, Jehoiakim, um, he, he thought that nothing can happen that um, um, their stronghold will be broken. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he relied on that one and rebelled against um, Nebuchadnezzar the mm -hmm. second. And so when he rebelled against him, that started the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, Babylon besieged Judah. Mm -hmm. And Nebuchadnezzar came and, and sieged the land of um, um, Judah. And he took hold of Jerusalem. And that was when in 605 BC, yeah. God gave the, the people of Judah into the hands so of the Nebuchadnezzar, okay. and they were taken into captivity. Mm. Okay. okay. Okay, so uh, that's a very good point. Pastor Ike, you know, how do we connect it, Jehoiakim and Jeremiah, mm. and linking it with the word of God? Yeah, I think um, just as Pastor Nico said, if you look at Jehoiakim, um, he, he was a king that did not really obey what God, you know, says. Mm -hmm. um, it was a time that Prophet Jeremiah even sent a scroll containing the very word of God, but he cut the scroll and then bent the scroll right in the presence of his people, okay, just to show that I don't care what God says. And as Pastor Nico said, Jehoiakim actually had his faith not in God, but in the Egyptians. He believed that the Egyptians would come to his aid. In fact, wh when he, he, he stood up and openly, you know, um, went against the, 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 the Babylonians, he knew that Neko II and the Egyptian army would come to his aid. But unfortunately, that led to the destruction of Jerusalem, and they went into captivity. Mm -hmm. It is believed that he died actually in captivity. That was when... That was what led to Daniel and, and the three Hebrew boys going into Babylon as, as, you know, as slaves. But there's something that we can also learn from here. You look at the life of Jehoiakim and you realize that he is not so different from a lot of powerful people today. Yeah. Especially, you know, some politicians, you know, some kings, some people in power who feels like 
You know, the word of God doesn't even have any effect on their life. They don't, they don't care about what God says. They believe that what they have as power given to them by the people is enough. And you look at Joachim, he finds, it says that he finds the content of God's words irrelevant to his life. Because he believed that he had a strong ally, and that was the Egyptians. It was okay for him. He didn't need the word of God. He openly, you know, bent the word of God and showed, um, I mean, no contempt to it. He believes, or he believed that he could live without the counsel of God's word. Today, a lot of people believe that, that we don't even need God's direction. We don't need God to tell us what to do. You know, um, recently listened to news and especially posts on social media, you come across a lot of statements like, where are your pastors now? You know, wh where are your, your so-called bishops now? Where are these now? Because people feel like these, the, 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 the Bible can save us now, even from coronavirus. <laughs> and so we don't need the Bible's direction anymore. And the very attitude of Joachim is what we see in many people today, especially, and unfortunately, people in power. So they feel like they have what it takes to take care of themselves and they don't need God anymore. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. Pastor, you want to say something? Yeah, on this point, you know, um, contemporary, mm -hmm. people um, um, value human right mm. than the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so it, it becomes so easy for people to disobey the, law, uh, the, the laws of God. Mm. And they, 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 they have it at heart to go uh, according to what human rights says. Mm. And so when you are discussing issues of um, uh, immorality and so on, people can plainly say that mm. it is their right. Let mm. them do it. Mm. But when you come to the laws of God, mm. they will say, no, this one is for, for, for these people. This mm. one is for this. Yeah. But when um, um, Jehoiakim did that, the result that came, he wasn't only the one who was affected. Mm. The whole um, 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 people of Judah were, were affected. Were, were, were affected. Yeah. And when um, Nebuchadnezzar came to Judah, he took first the nobility um, of Judah. Mm. And so the, 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 the royals were also taken to, yeah. to Judah. Yeah. Yeah. So you see that from top to down, mm. everyone was affected. Mm. Even those who were left in the land, they suffered because those who can work for them mm. were not around. Right. So looking at Jehoiakim. Uh, from from Judah. Daniel was also from Judah. Mm. Now, it is believed that Daniel was born around the time of uh, Josiah when mm -hmm. he became a king. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, Josiah brought a lot of reform reformation to the people of Judah, destroying all the lesser gods yeah. and lifting up God. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, Looking at Daniel's life as a statesman mm. in the court of Babylon, mm. spanning for about 67 years of serving Babylon and the Persian court. Mm. And he was an excellent person, just like the opposite of Jehoiakim yeah. at that time. Yeah. But they are all for coming from the same <laughs> the area. Same area. Yeah. Uh, you know, that gives us a clear understanding that God has given us all our willpower. Sure, sure. Huh. So when, 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 when the Bible gives us a clear understanding of Daniel's uh, background life, mm -hmm. huh, he had a good foundation. Mm -hmm. And even in a different land, mm -hmm. he still served as a statesman. Yeah. You know, he gave his best service. He didn't say, we prayed, we prayed, and mm -hmm. still we came into captivity. Mm -hmm. As today, so many people think that uh, God has disappointed us. Mm. So God, didn't you be, keep this job? Mm. Didn't you help me sustain my job? Then if you have disappointed in me, then I'm disappointed in you. Mm. But Daniel was a different person. Mm. But you know, in uplifting God, Daniel, God also opened a door for Daniel in the camp of his masters, mm. that through his lifestyle and through what he portrayed for that 67 years, he also came to see the God of Israel. Sure. So, beloved, one thing that we need to know is that in our life, there are some times that will be difficult. There mm. are times that, time that we'll go through difficult times, we'll go through hardship. But one thing is that God has not disappointed us. Of course. God is making a way mm. for us yeah. where we seem there's no way. Sure. All right. Sure. So now... When we look at the another aspect of the book, 
mm -hmm. whereby it talks about when the book was written. Yeah. Huh. The time is the date. Yeah. How do we look at it, Nico? Yeah, um, we, we have so many scholars who have tried to talk about the author of the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most people say that um, it is not a prophecy. You know, it was written later, later, um, mm -hmm. around Jesus' time. Mm -hmm. And the author backdated the book <laughs> just to make it look prophetic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when you read the content of the book, mm -hmm. the content itself reveals that um, Daniel is the author. Sure. And Daniel lived during the reign of Jehoiakim, as we've said, mm -hmm. and the, 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 the under the rulership of um, Nebuchadnezzar through to Bersasa and also after the Babylonian Empire yeah. and the Persian rule. Yeah. And so we see that um, um, Daniel accounted um, um, his lifestyle from Judah to Babylon and how he went to the court of the Babylonians to serve there. Mm -hmm. And after um, Nebuchadnezzar II, um, true to Bersasa, and so you see that Nebuchadnezzar II started mm -hmm. ruling from 605. Yeah. And so this depicts that the book of Daniel was written around the 6th century BC. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this, this, it is clear from the book. And when you read um, Daniel chapter 10, mm -hmm. when Daniel was talking about the vision that um, he had, yeah. in verse 1 he mm -hmm. says that, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, mm -hmm. a message was revealed to Daniel, mm -hmm. whose name was called Belshazzar. Yeah. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, mm -hmm. and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Mm -hmm. It means that Daniel received the messages which were to come true in the later years. Mm -hmm. So the messages were given to him at his time. And so the, the, the one he said was the reign of Cyrus, the king of what? Persia. Persia yeah. Yeah. And so we can situate the book of Daniel in the 6th century BC, okay. where um, Babylon was ruling and also the Medians and the Persians were also ruling. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. So I think what um, Pastor Deco is saying is, is exactly as it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when you also look at the book of just that it comes from one author, you understand me? And I just want to share um, seven indications that demonstrates the unity in the book of Daniel. The first one is that the natural flow of the book in which the existence of a certain chapter implies the existence of a, pre a previous one. Okay. okay, when you go through uh, the book of Daniel, you realize that when you are finishing perhaps uh, chapter 8, uh, chapter 8 indicates that there is another chapter. There seems to be some con kind of continuation, okay, mm -hmm. telling us that there is that unity. Again, number two, common subjects in the historical chapters. You know, we have the book of Daniel has been divided into two parts. We have the historical chapters, or the historical parts, and yeah. then we also have the, the prophetic part, okay? Yeah. So chapter 1 to 6 is the historical part, mm -hmm. and then the 7 to 12 is the prophetic part. Mm -hmm. When you look at the common subject that is treated in these two subjects, okay, the historical part links to the prophetic part, okay? They are not two different sections. This indicates the unity. Number three, the chronological relations established throughout the book, that is the stories and the visions are intertwined with the story of Daniel's life, okay? So you see Daniel's life in there, in all the visions, in all the stories, okay? You look at the, where he prayed for his people. They were in captivity. Yeah. He involved himself. It was not only his people, but he himself was there and they needed the help of God. Again, number four, Daniel 7 is a link that ties up together the historical part and then the, the how do you call it, the prophetic type, the, the part. So if you look at Daniel chapter 1 to 6, verse chapter 7 kind of links the two sections um, together. Number five, the book is joined together through, I mean, through a chiastic structure. We'll talk about that chiastic structure. It's very, yeah. very important, okay? So that structure is there to give us more understanding. And then number six, the literary style that features, okay, that is used to write in the book of Daniel mm -hmm. is, is, is such that it suggests it is one. It is, there's that unity that flows in the book of Daniel. And then the last one is that there is this progressive parallelism, okay, between the visions mm -hmm. point to the, uh, that point to the same author and the subject and its purpose. So mm -hmm. 
we are talking about a special unity in this book of yeah. Daniel, yeah. okay? And that is a very strong thing that we need to understand um, in the book of Daniel. You've shown us some amazing things in, in, in the book of Daniel. Yeah. Uh, I think let us pause here and look at, look at how God comes through yeah. with the writings of the book yeah. of Daniel. Uh, 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 Nico want, wanted to come in with something, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. before you come in, let's look at the structure. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to look on the screen. That we have, we, we've posted a slice on, on the screen. And uh, there's the chiasmatic structure of the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at it, you realize that we have uh, three sessions. We have the small part as written in Hebrew, the, he the top parts. Then we have the Aramaic session. Then we have the Hebrew again. So it starts with Hebrews. It starts with the writings of Hebrew. Then it's written in Aramaic. That is chapter 1. The narrative is in Hebrew language. Then from chapter 2 to chapter 6 is in the Aramaic language. Then 7 to 12 is in the Hebrew again. Now when you look at the first part, which is chapter 1 to chapter 6, you realize that that is a historic session. And one thing that connects it, we call it chiastic, or how, how we are saying right now. Huh? What, what, what it means is that there is a connection between chapter 2 and chapter 7. Now, when you look at the whole book of Daniel, there is a connection between chapter 2, chapter 7, and chapter 8, then chapter 10 to 12. Now, let me pause here and do give this explanation. One thing is that they talk about the same things. But as it moves, it progresses, it gives a detailed mm. explanation to but to, the, but to the same thing. So there's a connection. So when you see chapter 2, as in pink color, and chapter 7, they are connected. They are the same thing. Mm. Now chapter 3 and chapter 6 in the green color uh, also talks about the same thing. Now, what it means is that there was a persecution of Daniel friends in the fire fairy furnace. Now, there's also a, a persecution of Daniel in the lion's yeah. death, so it's connected. Now, we see a fall of Nebuchadnezzar in the purple color. Then we also see in chapter 4 and chapter 5, there's a fall of Bel Belshazzar. So it is connected. We see how it is. This one is connected to this. This one is connected to this one. This one is connected. When it comes to the prophetic session, it is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the pink, that is chapter 7, is connected to chapter 12. Whereby chapter, chapter 7 deals with the, fall, the rise and fall of the kingdoms. Chapter 12 also deals with prophecy on the rise and fall of kingdoms. Now, the, the, the sea blue, or light blue, how you ever see it, deals with a prophecy, chapter 8. A prophecy on the battle between kingdoms and the arrogance of the little horn. Now, the same thing you see in chapter 11. Then chapter 9 and chapter 10 is also connected. So this is what we call the, chias the, the chiastic system or the, uh, the chiastic system. Huh. So when you look at the book of Daniel, it is so connected. Now, I, I, was, I was reading something recently and someone said, there is, there is something, there is a temptation that goes on. In chapter 1, there's a temptation of food. In chapter 2, there's a, there's a temptation about, about something, about history that's going to happen. In chapter 3, there's a temptation of worship. In chapter 4, there's a temptation of, uh, 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 how do you call it, humility, whereby it's told to be humble and something else. So someone say, you when you look at the book, there is, there is something that goes through mm. it. Yeah. There's something that goes through it. Huh. Pastor, Pastor Nicole, you wanted to come in with something important. Yeah, um, first on the, on the um, literature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, we are saying that Daniel is the main um, author. And we are proving why we are saying so. And, you know, um, human beings, we have our own dictions, yeah. like our way of speaking. Yeah. And some words, even in, among um, friendship, maybe you are three in a group. They are, um, um, there may be some of you or, or a particular person among the group who will be fan of using a particular word. Yeah. And so if you are not there and a statement is made and you hear it, you can um, um, emphatically say that 
because of this word, I know that this person this person? said it. Yeah. So we are saying that how um, Daniel was playing with words in the book, mm -hmm. um, from chapter 1 to chapter 12, mm -hmm. yeah. we can emphatically prove that because of the diction, Daniel is the author of the whole chapters. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Kaya I just want to make it um, a little bit practical. Right. You know, um, we are saying that we have 12 chapters. Yeah. And the 12 chap chapters, we see that we, we have divided it into two. Mm -hmm. The first six um, is what we call the historical part. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the last um, six is the prophetic part. Mm -hmm. And so um, between the two books, we say that the chapter seven mm -hmm. is, is the one that connects the two. Yeah. Okay. And so we have the, the one at the right, which yeah. is the prophetic, the mm -hmm. one at the left, which is mm -hmm. the historical. Um, historical. Yeah. And so when, when we come to the um, historical section, mm -hmm. I just want to use my finger mm -hmm. as, as, as an example. Yes, so the, 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 um, the, thumb. the thumb will be the chapter one. Mm -hmm. And that chapter one is a narrative. Mm -hmm. And so we may take it away. So when you want to pair it, you know, it is not a pair with the, with the rest. Yeah. And so it may be taken out as the historical um, section, which yeah. is a little bit different from the others. Yeah. But you see that this finger is almost the same like this one. Yeah. And so the two here will be the chapter two mm. and the chapter um, um, six, mm. which yeah. will be on the rise mm. and the fall of kingdoms. Mm. Yeah. And the chapter um, four and the chapter five, they are also this almost the same. Yeah. Uh -huh. and so the chapter four and the chapter five, which is the prophecy on the fall and rise of King Nebuchadnezzar, which is mm -hmm. now and chapter best four. Best mm -hmm. And the chapter five also talks about the rise and fall of a king. Best and best so best. the two talks about the so we that is what we are talking about, the um charismatic mm -hmm. um, um, um mm -hmm. thing we are okay. talking about. All right. Yeah. So okay. viewers, we want to take a break. We want to pause here. Don't go away. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Yeah. Today, with the touch of a computer key, a message can go electronically across the world in an instant. Hello there, saints and friends. It is that time of year again, and though we are suffering at the hands of COVID-19, lockdown and self-isolation, we will not be deterred. The South England Conference of Seventh-day Adventists invites you to their first ever virtual camp meeting starting Sunday the 14th of June for one week until Saturday the 20th of June 2020. In direct response to the current climate of turmoil and uncertainty, the theme for the week will be in times like these. A wonderful array of speakers will lead out in the sessions, including some of our favorite pastors, Mark Finley. Romans 8 comes to the end with glorious victory. Dr. Elizabeth Talbot. Included in this invitation to be saved through Jesus Christ. Dr. Carlton P. Burr. Please do not look through the myopic lens of life and think that all of what we're seeing and all of what we're experiencing is coincidental or by chance. And Cami Ott. Just and true are thy ways, O God, you judge righteously. Along with Dr. Hybeth Williams. It is finished, paid in full, done. Dr. Chidi Rubber. Simply by changing your lifestyle, you can reverse disease. Pastor Chuck Hagel. This series will help you explore how do you raise kids in a digital age. Dr. Charles Wesley Knight. And somebody came to camp meeting tonight Wondering why is God taking so long? Pastor Justin Kim. Third day, prepared for the sixth day. There was no procrastination with God. And Dr. Andrews Ewu. Be holy in every aspect of your life. Do join us for this spirit-filled event broadcast on Hope Channel Ghana, Facebook Live and YouTube. House of Prayer morning sessions will commence at 6 a.m. And the evening commitment service will begin at 6 p.m. A reminder of the dates are Sunday the 14th to Saturday the 20th of June 2020. The youth program No Walls Talk will follow on at the end of the commitment service at 8 p.m. Prayer requests and health questions during camp meeting call 01923 656 528. We shall overcome.
welcome viewers, your hosts, and your usual program, Revelation of Hope. Pastor Pell, Pastor Ike, and myself, Theodore, we are here to enjoy and to study with you. All right, we just moved on to another area of our study. Now, beloved, we want to look at something very important. We want to look at the idea about the book of Daniel. It has a main truth. Mm -hmm. It has something that is talked about. And I think Pastor Ejekum will want to help us with that. Pastor Nicholas Ejekum. Yes. Um, we, we are talking about the, the, the main um, issues that the book of Daniel carries. Yeah. And first, um, when you read from chapter 1 to mm -hmm. chapter 12, uh, the whole book can be summarized under one theme, mm -hmm. that God is omniscient. We, when you read um, Amos chapter um, 3, verse 7, the mm -hmm. Bible says that surely the Lord God does nothing mm -hmm. unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophet. And so God revealed the history of our world to Daniel. Yeah. And that is what is carried through. And the bedrock of um, these messages, these revelations that God gave to Daniel is that though this world um, um, will go through so many series, mm -hmm. our God is in control and he will save his faithful ones. Mm -hmm. And so the first one, I want to summarize it under, under three main themes. Yeah. The first one is that our God that we served, um, we are serving. He mm -hmm. is the one who knows the secret things. Mm -hmm. And he reveals the secret things to his prophets. Okay, and right. so the one that he will choose is the one that he will communicate through. And in this context, he chose Daniel and he spoke to him concerning the future of uh, the history of our world. And the second is that um, God is the one who sits in heaven. Yeah. And he holds the power of this world. Mm -hmm. and, and if he holds the power of this world, it means that every creature should pay an allegiance to God. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't um, 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 align ourselves or put our trust in human beings. Mm. And so when you read the, the book of Daniel, all those who put their trust in God w w became victorious at the end. Yeah. And those who relied on human strength, at the end we, we, we saw that their end wasn't fruitful. Mm. And so that is how God depicted um, himself in the book. And the last one is that um, if we, 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 we put our trust in God mm -hmm. and he reveals the future to us, his, his, his revelation or the message that he gives to us, it is not, um, um, the main purpose is not to put us in fear, but to make us aware of his dealings mm. and what he yes. has in store for, for his people. Good. And at the end, it will give um, an, a, a, a picture of God. That is who God is mm. to we human beings. So the point I get from God reveals to redeem. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, yes. so when you look, you know, there's one chapter in the book of Daniel that I love so much, chapter 7. Okay. I see he, he's scaring you. <laughs> but immediately you see the, it changes the scene. Yeah. <laughs> and it means God is telling you that all what you are seeing that is carrying you, there is hope. Yeah. That's the key thing. There's and hope, beloved. So, so what, what you are going through, all these things that you are hearing, then you are hearing on the media, you are hearing, you see, fear is something that is dis disturbing people sure. today. Sure. Fear. Our greatest enemy is fear. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Fear. But one thing is that God is telling us, you know, Pastor quoted a text, God will not do anything unless he reveals. Yes, yeah, now the word true. reveals, to disclose, yeah. to open, yeah. to show. Basically, revelation. So, yeah. To revelation, yeah. revelation, to yeah, yeah, to uncover. Yeah. So, whatever it is, if you want to know tomorrow, God reveals to mm -hmm. you. But wherever God reveals to you, He has, even if it's dark, He has some yeah. light yeah. in it. That yeah. brings uh, that brings out hope yeah. to us. Yeah. That's why we call this program Revelation, revelation of Hope. Of hope. Yeah. Remember, we are looking at the background of Daniel. So, Pastor, thank you very much for that, that point. He says, there is a God in heaven. That is what yes. Daniel says. Yes. There is a God in heaven. God that in is that statement. You don't forget. There is a God in heaven. You don't forget that statement. However your life is, you don't forget that statement. There is a God in heaven. Mm. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Yeah. Daniel and Revelation, yeah. they go together. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do go together. And, and you started saying something like that. Mm -hmm. Without 
you cannot they fully understand the book of Daniel without Revelation. Sure, yeah. The same way you cannot understand fully the book of Revelation without the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at these two books, they are indications here and there yeah. that kind of links them together. Yeah. There are chapters in Daniel that is further explained in Revelation. the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when we link them, we get the understanding. But there are two things I want to quickly quote to you. Yeah. One from Daniel chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. And then the other from Revelation chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. Even though we are not looking at Revelation, I still want us to look at that. Okay. So that we get to know the relationship. Because in these two chapters, both books kind of talk about one important person. Daniel chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, it says that, mm -hmm. I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold... A certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of aphas. Mm -hmm. His body was like bell, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like banished bronze in color, and the sound of his, of his words like the voice of a multitude. Okay, right. uh, th so this description is strange. Who is he talking about? <laughs> now let's listen to what um, John the Revelator also said in Revelation chapter 1. So verses 13 to 16. You want so to read that? So it says, it mm -hmm. says, And in the midst of the seven lamps, mm -hmm. one like the Son of Man, clothed mm -hmm. in the garment down to the feet, mm -hmm. and girded about the chest with a golden band. Mm -hmm. Should I have the 14? Yeah, yeah, read up to 16. Okay, all right. His head, his head and his hair mm -hmm. were white like wool, mm -hmm. as white as snow, mm -hmm. and his eyes like the flame of fire. Mm -hmm. His feet were like the fine brass, mm -hmm. as it refined in the fer fer furnace, mm -hmm. and his voice as the sound of many waters. Mm -hmm. 16. He had in his hand, right hand seven stars. Mm -hmm. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so when you look at these two um, verses, one from Daniel and one from Revelation, I mean, you don't need to be told. They are basically talking about the same person. You see, they, they, they both use um, a character, or talk about a yeah. character wearing the same garment. Mm -hmm. You know, that depicts some kind of a Jewish high priest. You know, the white linen with a golden band. Okay? His face shines mm -hmm. his eyes are bright mm -hmm. like like the, like fire you know and the skin is like banished um, how do you call it bronze mm -hmm. okay yeah. and you want to wonder i mean who is who are they talking about mm -hmm. this description is no other than the true author of the prophetic revelation our lord jesus christ amen yeah. and so you realize that both daniel and revelation talk about or uses the same kind of symbols and, and imageries to point to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. making it easy for us to know that these two books have some kind of what relationship. And I like it because when we read Daniel chapter 7 verse 13, it is where we find that yeah. Jesus Christ is called the Son of Man. Yeah. You see, when um, the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire by Nebuchadnezzar because they refused to bow to the golden image, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar came and said that were they not three that we, um, we cast into the fire? They answered yes. He said, how can I see, how come that I see four? And the fourth one is like the son of what? Of God. You understand me? Yeah. So this gives us indication that these two books are together. We can't understand one without the other. And they all point out to Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And yeah. Jesus Christ indeed as the author of the prophetic book. Amen. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a wonderful point that you make there. Uh, uh, there is a point that I want to bring up that we, w we have to look at. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you can't take Daniel out of the whole flow of scripture. No. It is part of a larger uh, book, which is the word of God. Yeah. Uh, and the relevance of the Bible is key. Uh, one thing that we need to understand that the Bible is relevant today. Yeah. And the message in the books of Daniel are relevant today. Yeah. Someone says, why would God talk about last days in the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. But God knows what he does. Yeah. He knows why he does it. So, yeah. Because it contains valuable information mm -hmm. of the coming of God. Yeah. It is for us. And <coughs> it is not in the future because we need it now, mm -hmm. which is a key thing. Yeah. One thing that we need to understand is that it is this, this, the Bible leads us to Jesus. Yeah. 
that's another relevant thing that we see in the whole Bible. Yeah. Now, one again, we see something that connects it. Mm. It is the main way developing trust in God. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. and you look at the uh, chapter 2 like this, for yeah. example, then look at that God can predict what is going to happen, and it happened like that sequence, like that, like that. You ask yourself, who is God? Mm. Who is this person? Mm. So you ask yourself, if this man of Galilee knows who can predict all these things into the future, how many years do I have on it <laughs> that I don't give my few years to him, him to take care of it for me? me. Yeah. So that is another good point. Now, one thing that you need to understand that it makes it, let me, I want to read this. It says, yeah. actually, we cannot live without the sacred text. Mm. We can't. Mm. It is the greatest solution in helping us face the challenges of our lives. Mm. So these uh, challenges, this pandemic that has shaped the whole world. <laughs> now people are coming to understand that with all our technology, with everything, it is it's God. Still, it's still, yeah, it's still God. It's still God. So we, you can't do away with the never, scripture. Never. You can't do away with Daniel. People talk about this book is this, this book, is, oh, this one is not necessary. You can't do away with this text. Huh? It says today we need God to talk to us through his word. The same way he did to Prophet Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. It's very because true. like we are in Babylon. Why? In January, everyone was praying that uh, uh, this year, 2020. <laughs> should, should, should if someone year. said, that if you when you say 2020, it sounds so it's nice. It's a perfect 2020. year. 2020. <laughs> it's so nice. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it's so nice. So it's a perfect year. <laughs> so is God still not God with mm. all these challenges? Yes. Yeah. He's still God. Yeah, he's still God. Huh. Yeah. So that is why we all need to put our help in, yeah. in studying of biblical yeah. prophecy. Yeah. Because it gives us underlying things about what is happening. Yeah. Huh. Now I want us to read Daniel chapter 9 verse 23. Okay. Daniel 9 23. 23. Let's, let's look at that text. Look, it says that uh -huh. um, at the beginning of your supplications, mm -hmm. the command went out. And I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore consider the matter and understand the vision. That's a good point. Consider yeah. the matter. And understand. Daniel was praying for understanding. Mm -hmm. Daniel was praying to understand the timings, to understand what these things mean. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the angel came and gave him the understanding. Mm -hmm. You see, God yearned to show his children the great truth of the Bible. Mm -hmm. We have shut our ears. To the voice of the Holy Spirit, and we are listening to people telling us stories, hmm. telling us, you know, we, we, you know, people, we like it when people pastors come and stand there and they tell us stories, and we laugh and we are happy. That's we think we, we have gotten something. Yeah. Beloved, it is time to delve into the Word of God. Yes. Let us remember that Joachim rejected the Word, and that was the end. Hmm. What will give him life? Hmm. So mm -hmm. we, if we reject the word, thinking, you know, you can, you can reject the word, even in church, if mm -hmm. you are thinking. Of, because mm -hmm. There are not some deep secrets mm -hmm. for some elites or some scholars, mm -hmm. but you and I can understand. I know as you are listening to this program, we're not talking about any strange stuff. Mm -hmm. It is just a simple thing that God wants to communicate yeah. to us. But mm -hmm. if only we would approach it with our sincere heart, we will also be... Uh, we also have that understanding in the book of Daniel. If only you also come with a sincere heart, you yeah. also understand the book of Daniel. Yeah. We want to pause here. For a Cassian in Kitswa, and you're the four near a Jumessian four. So a crap putting be why you beat me a fasso, and my Jumagina ye say, Dache, a Juma, why am she she be a metoyan so? Send your COVID nineteen by a yamuni, a yasem sebe, hope channel, a CC, a bear for a job of strong cubia, or best or then she say, Ah, it is so ye a bravo. Jumadian and Apostle, ye send your ye share ye Juma. And sana COVID 19 ye eba. Afei, ye juma ho ayem shishie. And don't mu no beshe, e juma no tibia, eni ni insun saso. Afei, akwe nye ebe buwao, ama suwe juma na ase ya nase e se impwa, ebe jine ye, anase ebe sinida dem. 
adwuma so hwe se ne ye hwe adwuma so ene se ne ye ton adwuma e ma afofro se ne ye besi si ye ho asie e wo adwuma ahoro nyina mu ene akwanya bi wo ho a e be boa ye ama ye adwuma agina ye a ne nyina ye nuanom yi e de bebre ye na opani ne a adwuma die yi si ne na so ene owura charles othaniel abe when I be buano, I ye orua Edmond in cancer, balanced life coach, Dr. Kwame Adum, CEO, a wo entrepreneur clinic, or nukreya, or ye lecturer, a wo University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Pascal Brenyanso, a ye human resource and capacity development consultant. So you who free moa, why you who share 15th. Epoca 20th June 2020 TA Nkraba South Ghana Union Conference SCC se emwa yen ye sika sem ni adwuma ye ho oni Hope TV Ghana aka bo mu a wodi dwumadie strongquet se ebre yen Hope Channel Changing Lives Beloved, there is something about the book of Daniel and Daniel himself. And I want us to take our time to look at it. That will help you personally. That gives us hope in this crisis. Now, Pastor Peo, can you help us with the, the virtues of Daniel? What do we see from the book? Yeah, I think when you, when you go through the book of Daniel, you realize that Daniel was, was an exceptional character. You know, when you actually look at what happened, what, what happened to him when um, his city was attacked, he was taken as a slave. I mean, just look at a young man. Pe um, scholars believe that he was around 17 years. Mm -hmm. And he had a promising future. He, 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 he knew he was going to grow up to become a, a man, you know, probably get married, live a normal life. Mm -hmm. But all these dreams were cut off, were cut short when Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem and took him as a captive. It is believed that when Narnia was taken, as well as with those, all those, you know, guys from Jerusalem, yeah. they were castrated. Mm -hmm. And they, you can imagine the pain that he was in. He trusted in God. Okay. But this has happened to him. He was castrated, and in that pain, he had to walk from Jerusalem to Babylon as a slave. He lost everything, mm -hmm. but you would, you would think that it would affect how he related to God or how he, will, he related to God. But Daniel's, you know, faith, or faith in God never changed. He, he maintained that purity even in the land of captivity. Mm -hmm. When he went into Babylon, the very first test that he faced was eating the king's delicacies. Yeah, I think you know, we're looking at that. Later. Yeah, yeah, but he, he denied. And, and, and Daniel lived such a pure life. But there are some few things I just want to share. Maybe I just want to share a few, and then pastor would continue. It says that Daniel belonged to nobility through the King Hezekiah's line of descent. He, he was a noble. Mm -hmm. He was not just a normal person. Oh, yeah. He was a noble. He was a very prominent student of the Babylonian language and literature. When you read Daniel chapter 1, verse 4, it makes us understand. You know, Daniel, even in captivity, excelled in studies. So we will say that he, when he even went to Babylon, into the University of Babylon, mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. a student. Yes. Yeah. He was a first-class student. Yeah. Okay, he was brilliant. Okay. King Nebuchadnezzar recognized his capacity as a scholar. He, 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 he was so bright that even the king himself Academy. knew that this guy, yeah. academically, he was something else. You know, that is, that is why I always believe that if we want to change the world, mm -hmm. we need to be scholars. Of course. We need to be thinkers. Of course. That when we uh, find ourselves in those areas, mm -hmm. we make the difference. Of course. Uh -huh. Of course. You don't sit in your room and you don't study and you don't go higher and you think that we will. Because looking at Daniel, he made a difference in the, in the court of what? So it's like, it's like if now we are looking at the Jubilee House. He was in the Jubilee House. Mm -hmm. He was in the White House. Those were the places that Daniel found himself because of the relationship we had with God and the, and, and the knowledge that we had. Yes. So if we want to change the world, it's not just about just whatever you are doing, whatever area that you, if you're a student, whatever you are doing, 
be an excellent student. If you are doing medis medicine, if you are doing engineering, whatever excel, area that you are excel. doing, if you are a businessman, excel. excel. Yeah. You get to the top. And when you see, one thing that when you are talking, people know that this person knows what he's, he's talking about. Person. He's an excellent person. Yeah. And, and you see, one thing about Daniel was that, you see, we have students today a lot of time talking. Mm -hmm talking ag about the, the, the unfair treatment on campus. Mm -hmm. yeah, our lectures are this, you know, now that we are, there's the pandemic and we are home to online studies and this, yeah. we are fed up. Daniel wasn't like that. You know, the problem, the situation of Daniel, hey, we can't compare to our situation, mm -hmm. especially if you're a student watching. Daniel was a slave. He mm -hmm. wasn't a free person, he was mm -hmm. a slave. Mm -hmm. But he excelled academically. He didn't say, I, I, I was brought here as a slave, so I wouldn't, you know, contribute to my part. Yeah. But Daniel did his very best. He studied so hard. He mastered the Babylonian language. He became, a to he became, you know, number one in his class. And that is what Christians we need to do. Wherever you find yourself, make sure you glorify God in mm -hmm. what you do, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that would make God also, you know, okay. give us a breakthrough. Okay. And Daniel became the leader of the most distinguished, um, distinguished group of scholars from all Babylon. Can you imagine yeah. that? A slave from Jerusalem. Now he was a top scholar. Today I'm sure Daniel would have had his PhD and all that. He, he was leading the people there. Neither money nor power could corrupt Daniel. Mm -hmm. So what's that in Daniel chapter 5? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing could corrupt him. Mm -hmm. And these are the type of students or these are the type of people that we need in our world today. Mm -hmm. You're a Christian. You, are found, you find yourself in a political, you know, in a political right. world. And people around you are corrupt. That is when, that is where, or that situation that your light must be seen. Pastor, you are even going far. In your community, exactly. in your workplace, mm -hmm. wherever you find mm -hmm. yourself. That is where your light must yeah. be seen. So, kind of people say, well, there is so much corruption here. There are Christians there. If you are there, it must be different. You, mm -hmm. must, be like, you must be like Daniel. Mm -hmm. You must not be bought or be sold. Mm -hmm. Your principles as a Christian mm -hmm. must always stand out, no mm -hmm. matter the pressure you face. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can imagine Daniel. You can imagine him. There was a law signed against him, but he stood yeah. and did what he had mm -hmm. to do. Pastor, maybe you want to continue. Yeah, um, I want to continue from where you, you ended. You know, mm -hmm. um, being a slave, mm -hmm. um, he would have... Um, being in his own corner, sure. looking down upon himself because mm. now he has been disadvantaged himself, yeah. and pitying himself and yeah. he will not do what he is expected to mm. do. And that is the same thing we find ourselves in. Mm. When we are bombarded with the, the, the difficulties in life, mm -hmm. we, we, we start complaining. Mm. And so um, I didn't have the education. Yeah. Uh, I had, uh, my parents didn't do this for yeah. me. Um, in school, I'm, 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 I'm this. Yeah. So we try to capitalize on our weaknesses. Mm. Instead of looking at the opportunities that can come out of our difficulties, mm. Mm. We, we always crawl to our shelves mm. and we, 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 we closed the doors that can be opened for us. Mm. Daniel didn't do that. Mm. As a slave in a foreign land, he tried all his way first to please God. Mm -hmm. sure. And so no matter what comes upon our ways mm. as christians whether god is dealing we may think he's not dealing fairly with us or the system is not treating us fairly we need to maintain our integrity sure. we need to hold our integrity first our allegiance to god mm. and secondly all okay. the people that daniel was all working right. with he was faithful to them yeah. okay. so that is right. that is it yeah. so viewers we are wrapping up and there's something that I need to share with you before we leave. In the book of Daniel, there's what we call a prayer and a promise. Mm. You know, the book starts with the he, Jews praying that there's a lost kingdom. Judah is conquered. Mm. And the book, you see, at the same time in chapter 2, whilst chapter 1 they are crying, chapter 2, there is, there is, there is a message to restore the kingdom. Mm. That is the statue we see. Now, in, in, they are still praying again for a lost king. Your king is gone. Now, in chapter 7, there is a promise to restore the everlasting king, which mm -hmm. is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, number 3, there is a prayer of a lost temple. Jerusalem temple is gone. But in chapter 8, there is a promise to what? To restore the temple. Unto 2,300 days, then shall the temple be, be cleansed. There is a, there's a message of a promise to restore the temple. 
Now, the final one we see is that there's a prayer to restore a lost political monotony. Mm. They have become slaves. Now, there's a promise to restore sacrifice to ease. Mm. In the middle of the week, he will be cut off, chapter 9. Mm. Now, it gives us a clear understanding that even in chapter 9, what happened to God's people? Now, Daniel, or Michael, sorry, Michael stands in chapter 12. Mm -hmm. It gives us that when Michael stands, God's people are free. Yeah, sure. So the book of Daniel talks about, it starts with a problem, and it ends with a solution. Mm -hmm. Beloved, whatever might be going on in your life, you might think that that is it. There is no solution. Mm -hmm. But the book of Daniel tells us that it starts with the Judah, God's people, messed up. They know there's no hope. But the book ends with the statement, and Michael stands. And yeah. Michael shall stand. Praise that me. is the hope. Very soon, Jesus will come. Sure. Very soon, all this challenge will be over. Hold on to Jesus. Give your life to Christ. May the Lord bless you. We're going to meet you again. We're going to have time with you again. We're going to look at the first chapter of the book of Daniel in our next episode. I want Pastor to pray with us and pray for those who want to accept Jesus as their pastor, Savior. Pastor Amen. Ike, God bless do that you. for us. Um, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to suggest, you know, bow with me wherever you are. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to do that. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Father, thank you so much for giving me this hope. Today, I want to give my life to you and to follow you for the rest of my life. Forgive me of all my sins me of all my and sins. wash me with the blood of Jesus Christ. And, wash me with the blood of and Jesus today, Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And come and take control of me. And come and take control From this day onwards, from this I day am onwards. forever yours. I am forever yours. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you so much for blessing us with a hope. Hope that comes from knowing your prophetic truth. Yes. Please, let this hope continue to burn in our heart so that we will continue to live as Daniel lived, mm -hmm. maintain our purity in you mm -hmm. till the day that you come again to take us to be with you in your kingdom. Thank you for answering our prayers, for we have asked this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you.